Good morning and welcome to our Sunday worship service this morning. Thank you for joining us, family and friends of Lord United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Kalesi Taulu Ave Tufua, and always a, a privilege and a blessing to uh, have this opportunity to share the good news and to be connected with each and every one of you, even though our church remain closed, but uh, God's spirit and God is with us at this uh struggling and hardship days of pandemic. So hope all is well at your uh, home and your family. So let us prepare ourselves for our worship this morning. Uh, I My name is Sonny. Um, I'm thankful to be a part of you guys' service today as being a liturgist. Uh, we'll give Miss Kanate a break for today. And uh, just a reminder, uh, you should have your bulletins ready with you so you can be able to engage with the worship today. And the bulletin should have been emailed to you, and so you can pull it up from your emails. And uh, now we'll go to the call of worship, call to worship. In the midst of strife, God is with us. Come, O Lord. Pour your word into our hearts. In the anguish and grief of everyday living, God is with us. Hear our cries, O Lord, and quiet our spirit. Come, let us open our hearts and spirits to the Lord. We come, come with confidence, confidence and hope in the presence, presence of God. God. And now we'll be going to the hymn. Uh, it's called, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, which is taken from the hymnal 368. 368 and sing three verses of your choice.
to join us in our prayer. Oh Lord, we come, we come before, before you this morning with praise and thanksgiving. Open our minds to what you have to teach us. Open our hearts to your love and enable us to love you in a new and more profound way. Open our souls to the joy that can only be found in you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. And now let us go to the affirmation of faith, which we all should say in unison. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come and judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Hello children, now is our children moment and I hope you gather your little ones in front of your screen so we can share a short story uh, for our children. Let us sing. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, Misty, for playing our our children's uh, song. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. Hi, Fangalupe. I want you to read this from our reading today. Can you read this? Okay. When when, oh, when, when Jacob, Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, "Surely the Lord is in this, this place, place, and all was not." Aware. aware of it, he was afraid to say, to say, how awesome <coughs> is the place. The, this is none other than the house of, <coughs> of God. The, is, this is the gate the of heaven. Amen. <laughs> uh, thank you, Fangai Lupe, for reading that. Hi, Linda. Uh, this is the children moment. And... Um, Jacob, uh, he fell asleep he and he woke up and he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. Many, uh, many times you go or do something. Do you know that God is with you? Yeah. How? Because I know that he plays with me because I pray every day. Okay. I read the Bible. All right. Very good. What about you, Linda? Um, what was the question? Uh, do you know that God is always with you no matter where you are and what you do? Yeah. Even when you go to sleep? Yeah, I know when he's with me because I'm safe and safe. I know where I'm in and I'm not, and nobody's um, harassing me and he's saving me from them. Very good. I'm so glad. Uh, Jacob ran away from home. Actually, his mother sent him to his uh, to her family to look for a wife. But at the same time, God was with him. When you are afraid and worried, especially about this uh, COVID-19, this coronavirus, uh -huh. remember God is watching over us. And like you said, you always pray. So I'm so glad that you feel safe at your home. And remember all the children out there, remember that 
God is with you. Jacob woke up from his dream and said, surely God is with me, which he didn't know that God was with him. When you do, when you do something wrong, when you lie, remember you may not tell your parents, but God knows that you lied or you did something bad. So always be honest. Amen. Amen. Tell the truth because Amen. God is watching over you and God knows when you do something wrong, but God forgives you because God loves you and me. Amen. So let us pray. Okay. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your unconditional love. So often we've been in places that we think God is not with us. But we learned from Jacob's dream that truly the Lord is with him. Even though he did something wrong against his brother and he lied to his father Isaac and he left his home, but God has been following him. Let us commit ourselves to follow Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, children. May you go now. And this time is time of sharing our joys and our blessing and also lift up any prayer concerned. Happy birthday for those who are celebrating their birthday and anniversary. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. And let us continue to pray for Anita Palantine, Lisa, the girls, and grandchildren for the lost of a loving son, faithful father, and husband, Brian Valentine, this week. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the members of our congregations, the elders, the homebound members, those who are affected by all kind of illness. We're so grateful that none of our members got affected by this COVID-19, but please do be careful and keep yourself uh, safe but we'll pray for those who are struggling with some uh, sickness. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the North Valley Caring Services, Manny and Danny and those who are sisters on the street who are helping and supporting our homeless, homeless community. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Pray for our students that they uh, were told uh, they are not expected to return to uh, school in the fall, they may continue with the online um, study. So keep them in our prayers. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, pray for our um, leaders of this community. The uh, Pray for all the clergy that continue to share the good news and words of encouragement to all people, uh, our bishop, our district superintendents, and all the churches here in the valley. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the city and uh, state official leaders, the mayor, the governor, the presidents, that they seek God's word as they, as they remain faithful and trust in God. May they seek God's word and God's will by reading the Bibles and hope that they make a right decisions in all that they do. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, we'll continue to keep each other in our prayers, pray for our church and our future and our ministry. Yes, pray for um, the city that able to move our application for our construction permit that hopefully soon we'll get our uh, building committee, um, a building permit, so we can uh, start our our next step in uh, fixing and uh, doing all things that need to be done at church. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. And may God's loves be upon us, protect us from any temptations, tribulations. Thou shalt not fear, be courageous and be strong. May God's Holy Spirit be real and works within us, connected us by his love and be strong. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. So let us prepare for our pastor prayer. And if you have any other concerns, remember, God knows what's going, what's going on in your, in your life and your family. God can see your hearts, the trouble, the burden. 
God understands your mind, the confusion, and restlessness and worry that you may have. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this time as we lift up those who celebrate their birthday. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for the blessing of life and another year that you have blessed them in so many ways. And those who celebrate their anniversary, we lift them up to you, O oh God, that you guide and protect them, O oh God, as they grow in their faith and love you, knowing that all good gifts come from you. O oh Lord, we lift up Anita Palantine and the rest of the Palantine family for the loss of Brian. We will surely miss him, but may he rest in your loving arms. But may your peace, healing, comfort, and strength be with your family in the midst of this. Oh Lord, we pray for those who lost their loved one due to the COVID-19 or illness. May your healing hands be upon each and every one of them. Give them peace and strength and comfort. We pray for all the members of our congregations and for those who are joining us today in our worship, oh Lord. We pray that you bless them with your presence, oh God, and let them know of your ever presence, that they call upon your name for you are almighty. You have the power of healing and you have the power to strengthen them, oh God. Lord, hear our prayers as we lift up our young people that are not going back to school in the fall. We pray for peace, comfort, and we pray, O oh God, that you guide them with your wisdom and understanding. We pray, O oh God, for our elders, our homebound members. We pray for our community. We pray for our homeless community. We thank you for Dan Rathbone, the Sisters on the Street, Manu and the North Valley Caring Services for their ministry. We pray that you protect them from this virus so they can be your hands and feet to others who are in need. O oh Lord, we pray for our bishops, our clergy, our district superintendent, and I pray for the future of the church that we stand strong and be a witness of your goodness to the world. O oh Lord, we pray for the leaders of this um, community. We pray for the city official. We pray for the president, the mayor, the governor, that they seek you, O oh God, so they make a right choice according to your will. Hear our prayers open our hearts so we can hear your word this morning and be with us from our own comfort of our home and to be courageous and be strong and seek you in all that we do as we pray the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and thy glory forever and ever amen amen
hear God's word taken from the book of Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 19. Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 19. And it goes like this. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached out to a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and laid down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. And he will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. There is none other, other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone and he, lay, and he placed it under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, through the city used to be Lutz. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our theme for this morning is, have you encountered Jesus lately? Or have you experienced the presence of God during this COVID-19 pandemic? From our reading comes from the book of Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 19, which Sony read beautifully. Thank you, Sony. We know that Jacob was on the run. After he disguised himself as his brother Esau and had come to his father Isaac, lied to him and declared that he was Esau in order that he might receive the blessing his father has intended for his older brother. When Esau discovered the deceit and cunning ways which his brother has received, the blessing that intended for him from his father Isaac, Esau was crying and said, as soon as dad died, I will kill my brother Jacob. So his mother, Rebecca, who did favor Jacob, heard the threat of Esau. So she called Jacob in and said, you better leave now to save yourself for your brother is planning to kill you. So go to my brother in Haran and stay there until your brother settle with his anger. And I will send you the message when to return. When Esau is better and hopefully welcome you back. So Jacob began his journey toward Haran and he was in a hurry in escape from his brother Esau. So the beginning of our reading that he started his journey, he left Beersheba and all the way to Bethel, which is about 10 miles north of Jerusalem. And there it was getting dark, the sunset, so Jacob decided to rest. He grabbed a, lock, a rock and used it for a pillow and went to sleep. While he was sleeping, God revealed himself to Jacob in a dream. So that he awoke from the dream, he made a declaration in verse 16. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Past tense. That's me. He didn't know God in his past, but now 
he know. The night before and when he ran away from home, he wasn't sent or feel or know the presence of God. He wasn't sure that God was with him until he had his dream and his vision. He was unconscious of the presence of God. You see, there is nothing in this place, which is Bethel, where Jacob lie down and sleep and had his vision. In this place, Jacob would never ever think that God is present. Because here in Bethel, where he lie down with a rock under his head, it was a rocky place, only little soil, very all rocks, a little vegetation, no water, no stream, just rocky, barren wilderness. Everything looks dry, nothing that ever recommended or suggest that God's presence is in Bethel, where Jacob at. This reminded me of the time that I was called to my first appointment in Imperial Valley. As we travel with my family, coming through the mountains, in the desert, as we were driving up and I looked up, all I see, mountains, trees, so brown, so dry, desert, no water, and it was 100 degree hot. And I thought to myself, who would live in such a place? I wonder what kind of church that I will be serving. There is this feeling of not knowing that God is present in every place. Until we reached to the town and we started to see buildings and it's just like here. The people are so loving and caring with the welcoming heart and for three years that I have witnessed that surely the presence of the Lord is in that place. When we look around in our situation, we are facing many problems, difficulties, we experience suffering and pain and we tend not to be able to see God present. Jacob had a long journey, a long, hard journey, and he just fell on the ground and grabbed the rock and went to sleep. There are times we lose the hope of God's presence because we are too tired, we are too weary to look up, to look up to the Lord. And what do we do? We often prone to cry, God, where are you? And truly and surely, if God was with us, if God was here, there is no hardship and it won't be this bad. Everything will be okay. <clears throat> because oftentimes in our circumstances of our life, there seems that our surrounding didn't suggest that God is here. Through our circumstances and our situation that around us, we lose faith and hope and our sense of God's presence. We go through some deep water, heavy trials and hard situation, and we don't have an understanding so we lose the sense that God is with us. We need to look up. When we are too tired and weary, just like Jacob, 
we just lie there like defeated and homeless and hopeless. Jacob not only experienced physical weary, but spiritual weakness. The deceiving of his brother and lying to his father really make him worried and fear that he had to run for his life. Yes, he was physically tired and he needed to rest. But deep in his spirit and his heart, the guilt, the regret, the hope that it never happened. And now it's the darkness of the night. No one else but himself in this rocky place. And we understand, we feel the loneliness, depart from God's presence and he's all alone. And that is why he had filled the spiritual weakness and hopeless, losing faith because that is the work of the devil in one's heart. When sins in you will make you spiritual weak and you'll be able to feel that God is in you and God is present. And when we experience that spiritual weakness and feeling hopeless, what do we do? We try to hide from the presence of the Lord. Remember Jonah, God called him to go to Nineveh and preach the good news and help those people to repent. And Jonah chapter one, verse three, he decided to go against God, to hide from the presence of God. But did God hide from him? No, God prepared the great fish and swallowed him and brought him back and sent him back to Nineveh. We so often limit God in where God is. We believe that only God is present in the church. But during this COVID-19, we have come to recognize and to acknowledge that God is everywhere. We close our doors on Sunday morning that we're not able to come because it's always nice to come to their church and we say, oh, how good to come to the house of the Lord for God is with us. As I'm preaching this sermon from the church right now and you're sitting in your own living room, I hope that you get to feel the presence of God in your own homes. Yes, God is with you when you wake up in the morning. God is with you when you're driving. When you are not in church in God's house, but you out in the community, God is forever present. It is our limitation. It is our sin that blinded us to see and to sense and to feel the presence of God in our midst. We don't have to come to church to feel the presence of God for God is everywhere. David witnessed that in Psalm 139 says, God, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. In verse two, you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, you know it completely. There's no place you can escape from God's presence. It is the place where you are and your human thoughts that limited you to think that God is not there. And that is the work of sin in Jacob's life that he did not know God until he saw God. And in his dream, then he declared and witnessed surely God is in this place, and I did not know it, but now he knows. It is sin that makes you feel that God isn't with you. Jacob loses the sense of God's love and God's presence, 
But when he awoke from his dream, he witnessed the presence of God. Of course, in our past life, in Jacob's past life, after lying to his father and deceive his brother, all he sees and think of is run away from home, is run for his life. He felt guilty of what he has done. And that is how sin works in our life that pull us away from the presence of God. But God says, but Psalm 39 says, God, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. Jacob woke up. He's still in the same situation, in the same rocky place. But spiritually, he feels so good. He feels so much love. He finally feel hopeful. He finally at peace of his mind. His life was transformed. Yes, there is no change in circumstances, but when knowing that God is with you, he has a change of heart, that he's aware of God's presence and make him see his circumstances in a whole new light. And immediately it's come to his senses to know that God is present. In the same situation, but look at it in a different perspective because God is with him and it takes away his fear, takes away his anxiety, and takes away his uncertainty of the future because God is present. And now, after his dream, Jacob already looked forward to go down the road to Herod, even though he doesn't know how is that road going to be. But he knows that God is with him. Now he can go and face his uncle and be with them for how long that he will be there. But he's no, he knows that God is with him and he can face anything in his future for surely God is with me. Having to encounter God changed Jacob and will change you as well. When you encounter Jesus, you'll be transformed. In our Bible study on Thursday night, I asked the group, have you encountered Jesus during this COVID-19? And many of them has answered, yes, pastor. We have encountered Jesus during this pandemic in so many ways. When I wake up in the morning and meditate on my words and have a moment of silence, one person say, I encounter Jesus when I look outside to God's creation, the beautiful flowers, the green leaves on the trees, the birds. And I know that is God present. And one grandmother said, yeah, pastor, the moments that I spend with my grandchildren to hear their little voices and talk with them, that is the presence of God in my life. I feel God's love and I feel God's presence. Have you encountered the presence of God in your life? And somebody may be feared and worried of this pandemic, but let me remind you, you need to come and see this pandemic in the way that God sees. What is God calling us during this COVID-19? Maybe to change our attitude, to forget about our past, to renew our covenant. And yes, when he woke up and witnessed that God is present, Jacob make a new covenant with God that I will worship you and I will keep you the God of Abraham and God of Isaac. We have been struggling financially. We have struggling with our health issues. We have been struggling in so many ways, suffered. There are many trials and tribulations. My kids were struggling to end their school year by trying to complete all their works online. And now they were told they're not coming back to classroom in the fall. They have to continue to study online. But remember, God is there. They made it through the end of this school year. And it's the same God that will begin with them. We ought to feel the presence of God wherever we are. And I guarantee you that wherever you are, God is there. In Psalm 139, David says, I can't escape God. God is with me, before me, and behind me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? 
If I go up to heavens, you are there. And if I make my bed in the depths and are there, and if I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, but the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. We need to have that awareness that God said to the people of Israel and everywhere, wherever you pitch your tent, I will go before you and set up the place. They have been in the wilderness for 40 years and God always lead them and before they settle into a particular place, God already prepared that place for them. Have you encountered God? Have you experienced his presence in your life in the midst of this COVID-19? If you haven't, I ask that you pray and ask God to open your eyes to see his presence, even though we struggle with this COVID-19, but God is with you. We'll all depend on God. And if you don't feel the presence of God, let me remind you, when you breathe in and breathe out, that is who God is. That you're taking in the love of God. You're taking in God's peace. Because no man give you that breath of life, but God himself who created you. Because our life depends on God alone. Yes, we are surrounded by God's presence always. As God revealed himself to Jacob in this rocky place, unexpected, it's the same way that God revealed himself to you in so many ways. You need to look around your surrounding and to see that God's presence. And if it's some guilt or some sins that remain in you, let us look into Psalm 51 when David confessed his sins of adultery. Restore in me, O Lord, a clean heart. And create in me a new heart so I can be connected to you, O Lord. Where is God? I want you to carry to you that if you take some time to discern the presence of God in praying and reading the scriptures, have a moment of silence, or look up into God's creation, or do something to offer your gift or yourselves to some other, somebody else. You can feel the love and the presence of God in your life. Have you encountered Jesus? Jacob Ladder is who Jesus is that came to be the bridge so we can reach heaven and God can reach us. This is the way, the truth, and life. And we must have a relationship with Jesus Christ so we can see God speaking to us through Jesus and we can ascend through Jesus to reach heaven and not only feel the presence of God, but also to know God and to feel God and to touch God in his son, Jesus Christ. Have you encountered Jesus lately? Yes, surely the Lord is here. The Lord is where you are. And now we know it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us respond to the word by offering our gift and ourselves. Thank you for your continued financial support. If you have your envelope, you may hold it. So as we sing our doxology, and I will pray for our gift this morning. You may mail your envelope to the church or drop it off at the office door. There's a mail slot that you can drop off your envelope any day of the week or put it in the mailbox. Uh, again, thank you so much for your gift and let us sing our theology before our offering prayer.
Let us pray. God, who made covenant with the whole human family and all creation, setting the rainbow in the sky in token of your faithfulness, to teach us anew to live as your covenant people, always ready to journey on at the prompting of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our service this morning. I hope you have a blessing and good day on this Sabbath. Rest and know that God is with you. Our benediction, as we depart from here, remember what struggles, what hardship, fear, and worry that you may have. God is with you. For God promised to Abraham, God promised to Isaac and to Jacob. I will bless you, I will be with you, but you must put your faith and trust in me. Remember that God is our Alpha and the Omega. He will guide you and lead you. There is nothing, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Go now in peace, hope, faith, and love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be with you till we meet again. Amen. Amen. <laughs>